Okay, so thanks very much, everyone. Uh, my title is, my topic is a bit of a mouthful. Um, you can probably also tell very quickly that I'm not a health economist. And uh, my, uh, what I'm going to present today is coming more from uh, an epidemiological and a biostatistical approach to analyzing health outcomes. So this work was uh, done in during my PhD at Oxford a while ago now. And the uh, PhD topic was to analyze biological aging using this concept of biological age in order to do high dimensional risk prediction and communication uh, of health outcomes using the biomarker data in the UK Bible. So to give you a bit of background, uh, a lot of us know that age is the strongest risk factor for most chronic diseases. But age is just a number. So what is it about age that predicts diseases so well? So this, this chart here shows how changes in biomarker measurements uh, are as people get older. And this, will, this is across uh, bio, uh, biomarkers that represent multiple uh, uh, body systems or organ systems. So collectively, this sort of trend across age can describe a biological aging process. And this can also potentially be represented as a biological age. So a quick outline of uh, what I'm going to go through today. Um, I'll start with the motivations for this analysis, the study design, and then go on to our statistical methods for estimating two kinds of biological ages. The first, the initial one is an age, a chronological age-based method. And the second one is a disease risk based method. And I'll move on to visualizations of body system age and biological ages, and also of the model diagnostic. And then I, I might propose a few um, uh, analysis extensions at the end for this session. Okay. So, why is that? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, we've got quite a high sort of ratio of white noise fuzz in the background relative to your voice. I don't know if you've got an air conditioner running or anything like that, or if, it, if it's just that maybe you need to sit a little bit closer to the microphone to change, change that ratio of your voice versus the white noise. So that might just help some of some of uh, people diving in to hear you clearly. Sorry about that. So I think it's my uh, laptop pen. It's, uh, it does sound like an air conditioner at the moment. So I'll see if I'll plug in that phone to help. OK, thank you. Hi, can you hear that me? That is very, very much better. Thank you very much. Great, sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, first of all, why, why study biological age? So there are quite a lot of epidemiological and epistemic games that I had for, for uh, coming up with a biological age. Uh, so first of all, um, the idea is to be able to simultaneously predict and also communicate multiple disease risks and not just single disease risks. And then uh, I also wanted to evaluate chronological age as a proxy for aging, because this is something that we normally use in, uh, especially in epidemiological analysis, we treat chronological age as the sort of a be almost as a be and end of uh, uh, measure of aging. And then I also wanted to assess com the commonality of risk factors, in this case, biomarkers uh, for different diseases. And it's hoped that this will help in terms of uh, early detection of um, high risk individuals in terms of disease risk. And, in, and that will help with uh, designing preventative or targeted interventions. And in fact, some body system ages have already been uh, trialed as interventions for behavior change. So for example, lung age has been used in uh, smoking cessation uh, initiatives. Okay. And then why use R? So a lot of these techniques, um, uh, sorry, a lot of these approaches use techniques that R is best suited to. For example, high dimensional data manipulation, uh, lots of uh, survival modeling, 
some of them quite advanced, and also uh, bespoke visualization, which uh, you see plenty of later. And also a uh, more practical point, I'm most fluent at R, but also had to overcome prejudice to use SAS instead. So the data resource that I used was the UK Biobank. And this resource um, recruited participants in middle age, um, about half a million of them, around 2006 to 2010. And these people were followed up for quite a number of years uh, via linked death registry and hospital records. And out of this half a million people, um, I focused on a healthy subset of, of 140,000 people in order to reduce reverse causality. And uh, based on the data quality and um, certain other um, factors that I won't go into detail about, um, I finally chose 72 biomarkers, uh, both physical and biochemical biomarkers that were potentially predictive of the incidence of 20 types of diseases uh, in order to do the analysis. So this graphic here shows the full almost the full range of the types of data collected by the UK Biobank. And the focus for me was on physical and biochemical biomarkers and also the linked uh, hospital records and the uh, registry records. So the first step of the analysis was to, to use these, uh, to, to, to process the data for these 72 biomarkers. And uh, I did that by applying principal components analysis, which can be very easily done using the uh, PRCOM function in R. Uh, I didn't quite stop there. Uh, so also after applying PCA, I also rotated uh, these, uh, uh, I, I rotated these factors using the very max function. So this was done in order to improve the characterization of the uh, biomarker principal components. So these uh, charts here, these bar plots here have been generated using ggplot. And uh, if we focus on PC1, which has the highest uh, uh, variation explained, you can see that quite a lot of, uh, if you look in the middle, quite a lot of the uh, body size type biomarkers load more strongly onto it. So this loading was uh, more pronounced, not just for this particular PC, but also across almost all of the other PCs, it was more pronounced after applying the uh, very max rotation. So after that, um, after that PCA with very max rotation was, um, was applied, I then characterized biologically each of these PCs for 51 of the 72 PCs in order to get descriptions of uh, the biomarker PCs. So for example, biomarker PC1 is quite evidently a body size biomarker. Then also um, having, um, having phenotyped the uh, fish, uh, sorry, 20 diseases to look at, um, I tried out a data-driven method to assess patterns of disease co-occurrence. I use hierarchical clustering uh, for, for this. So this is uh, um, what, what's normally called a cluster dendrogram that shows how these 20 diseases might cluster together. And this was uh, produced by first of all running the uh, H plus function for hierarchical clustering. Um, and here I've shown some of the settings that I've used for, for that function. And then after that, it's, it's just really easy, easy to uh, uh, call the plot for that uh, H plus object in order to get this dendrogram. Um, so, so this method actually wasn't used in the end. In the end, we went with a clinically informed approach to clustering the diseases into eight disease groups. And this is an outline of the, uh, the more statistical approach to how biological age was constructed in two ways, using both the biomarker measurements and also the incidence, uh, the data on the incidence of subsequent disease. So the first method, which is on the left, is uh, literally just assuming that chronological age is uh, 
how we define aging. So using chronological age as a proxy for aging and applying linear regression methods to, uh, to these biomarkers to get the biological age. And then the second method on the right is a bit more complex. So uh, this, this method is basically um, using disease risk as the outcome. So for each of these eight disease group uh, as the outcomes, um, a Cox Lasso method was used in order to select biomarkers that best predict that relevant disease group. And then that would have formed a, a body system age. So for example, lung age, artery age, and so on. And then afterward, a second step was, uh, was um, applied, which was uh, using an aggregation model in order to uh, summarize an overall biological age from these eight body system ages. And uh, I tried out a few methods for the, uh, for the aggregation model and then settled with a Markov multi-state survival model in the end because it had numerous advantages over other methods. So first of all, it was prognostic for multiple health outcomes, not just a single health outcome. And it can differentiate either the, uh, the health outcome type in this case, or also even outcome severity. And lastly, it accounts for competing risks of these outcomes. So I'm sure many other presenters will go into a lot more detail uh, on Markov models and also uh, uh, multi-state survival models. So I won't go into the detail here. Uh, just, just to note, I've used a three-state uh, multi-state model with non-frail, frail and dead as the, uh, as the states, as the state definitions. And it's a progressive model. So once someone becomes frail, they can never um, stop being frail. And the covariates for uh, each of these states are the eight body system ages. So at the bottom, I've put some uh, model diagnostics as well for, for this multi-state model. I looked at the uh, goodness of fit in terms of the state prevalence for each of these states over the uh, duration of uh, the follow-up in the data set. So you can see that the, uh, both the red and blue lines, the model versus the observed state prevalence uh, are actually really close. So it seemed to fit the uh, data well. Um, so, sorry. So I won't go into too much detail as well about how the um, body system ages were used to derive a biological age, um, but the parameters were used in some way and I can talk more about it offline. So this is some of the uh, R code that I've used both for estimating the body system ages and also the uh, biological age using the multi-state model. So on the top, it's for the uh, body system ages. I used the uh, GLM net package for Cox lasso regression. I think this is the only package in R at the moment that, that allows for Cox lasso. Um, and conveniently it also um, facilitates tenfold, uh, sorry, k-fold cross-validation. So I've used that functionality as well in order to get cross-validated um, parameters. And then for the uh, aggregation model, the multi-state model, I used the MSM package. And for this package, um, we need to specify the uh, transition uh, intensity matrix, the Q matrix in advance for the uh, transitions that are allowed. So this matrix that I've put here basically represents that state structure in the previous slide. And then an additional step for this project was to specify uh, the parameter constraints. So the covariate constraints, um, because the body system ages need to have the same parameter value across uh, the, the three transition types in the model. So I've just set up um, a list here that, that basically states these, these uh, body system ages have to be the same across uh, transitions. And then the last uh, chunk is just the MSM call itself. So um, 
after taking out all the various data manipulation steps, it very simply sort of reduces to stating the uh, regression formula. So the regression formula is just the state uh, regressed to chronological age plus each of the body system ages. And then specify the, um, uh, in this case, the participant ID and also the data set. And then for the covariates, it's a replication of what's in the uh, regression formula. And then I specify the constraints that were specified above as well. Um, and uh, on the last line, death equals true and ops type equals two are basically setting, uh, specifying the model such that uh, deaths and other transitions uh, that are used in this model are observed at the time of occurrence. So this, this means that um, the model doesn't, uh, doesn't do interval censoring. It assumes that uh, the point at which someone uh, is recorded as having a disease in the data is when that person actually transits into that state. So moving on to uh, selection of results, uh, this is the where, where a lot of the data this is. Um, so this chart here is uh, of the top 15 most important biomarker PCs in the age-based biological age. And the uh, most important biomarkers were based on uh, their what's called their relative importance. And this is actually quite an easy, um, uh, it, it's quite easy to calculate for linear regressions. So I used the Rela Impo package for this. And the Rela Impo package actually can calculate relative importance for a range of methods for linear regressions. The one that I've chosen to use is the Fabrice Scanizzi or Johnson method. And all I have to type is this uh, calc relimp call, put in the uh, linear regression object, which is a standard linear regression object in R, um, specify the type of uh, method that I want to use, and then ensure that the relative importance is sum to 100%. Um, and then for, for, for this uh, plot itself, I've used ggplot again and ranked the, uh, ranked biomarkers in terms of their relative importances. And then to display the correlations between the body system ages, uh, there's, there's a very nice uh, package called core plot that uh, produces plots in this form. Uh, so, so, so this allows a, a variety of um, uh, illustrations. The, the one that I've chosen to use is uh, the one with uh, colored circles in the uh, top right triangular uh, area and the uh, correlation coefficients themselves at the, at the lower triangular, the left triangular position. So this was done just by uh, using the R core function, first of all, to get the correlations and then using the core plot mix function from this package um, and specifying the positions and types of uh, illustrations that I wanted to, to get this, uh, to get it in this form. And what's really handy as well is in the last line, uh, I specified some items that allow um, this core plot to also uh, perform uh, significance testing on the correlations. And here you can see that uh, one of the uh, one of the pairs, so cardiac and neurological, that's been crossed out because it, it's, uh, it's where the p-value is, is less than 0 0.05. Okay. So this plot here is one of the key results of my thesis. Um, it's quite a busy plot, I'm afraid. Um, what, what it basically summarizes is the informational content of uh, body system ages, which are composed in a sense of uh, uh, the biomarkers and also the uh, and also chronological age. So uh, I've done some work to split out the effect of the biomarkers and also the effect of chronological age on the overall um, biological and chronological age effect on each of those disease outcomes. 
So this is done by splitting out the uh, red, blue, and gray bars above. So red is just the body system risk score, which is just composed of the biomarkers, the biomarker values. Uh, blue is the, uh, the overlap between chronological age and the biomarkers. And then gray is just chronological age alone. So the, the red plus blue bars essentially represent how much information is captured by a biological age or body system age uh, out of the uh, entire um, age effect of chronological and biological age. Um, there is some complication with uh, crosses as well added in to represent just the difference between body system and chronological age as well. So what we're aiming for is for the uh, red and blue graphs to, uh, sorry, the red and blue uh, bars to cover um, as much of that 100% as possible. And we see that's the case, it's, it's really high, um, almost 100% for metabolic age and for respiratory age as well. Whereas it's a bit lower for ages such as neurological age. And there are epidemiological explanations for that, including the uh, data availability of uh, neurological biomarkers. So these uh, quantities were essentially um, uh, the likelihoods read off from the, uh, from the Cox models. And, and that's fairly straightforward using the uh, survival package in R as well. And again, this was generated with ggplot and uh, there are more examples of how else I've used ggplot in the next slides. So another plot, another um, showcase of model diagnostics, there are two ways in which calibration was studied. So on the left, um, I looked at calibration of biological ages against chronological age. So we want uh, biological age to be um, pretty much equal to chronological age on average. So we're expecting them to fall along that um, um, diagonal 45 degree line. Uh, so you can see that the, the, the squares here represent the means. The size of the squares also represent the, uh, the size of the population in each chronological age bin, although you can't see much of a difference here. And then the lines represent the standard errors. So the R code I use for that, uh, so, so first of all, I bin the data in uh, chronological age groups, and I use the cut and aggregate functions for that. And then for the ggplot function, I use the uh, geom error bar and the geom point uh, specifications for that. And then the, cal the calibration plot on the right was looking at how uh, when people are grouped into tertiles of being uh, sorry, not quite tertiles, but three groups of either being biologically younger. So if their biological age is quite a lot lower than their chronological age, uh, biologically similar, which is when their biological age and chronological age are similar, or biologically older, where the biological age is quite a lot higher than their chronological age, that should um, that, that classification should be evident in terms of the uh, survival patterns free from the outcome of interest. So we expect people who are biologically younger to have a higher survival rate, whereas people who are biologically older would have a um, lower survival rate. And we are seeing it in, in, this, uh, in this plot here. So uh, the lines in the plot represent the uh, mean survival and then the, uh, the, the shaded area represents the 95% uh, confidence interval. So in practice, because I studied this for quite, quite a number of health outcomes, so there were plots for each type of health outcome. Sorry, each uh, survival plots for each type of health outcome. So the way these plots were generated by using, uh, was by using a special ggsurf plot package. And uh, this just requires, first of all, running the uh, Cox model using surf fit just to get the Kaplan-Meier curves and then plotting them using the GG surf plot function and then specifying that um, I want those confidence intervals shaded. Um, and then uh, more, more examples of how ggplot was used or similar packages. 
So this was how um, the uh, tertiles of body system ages, so biologically younger, older, and similar, uh, were represented. So the plot on the left is a radar plot, or you can call it a pro-evo plot. What this summarizes is the uh, average um, uh, average difference between biological or body system age and chronological age for each of the body systems and also biological age, which is the overall on top. So this was done by uh, using the GG radar package. And the GG radar uh, function was applied again on, on the bin data. And then the plot on the right is, uh, is just a concentric pie chart of these differences as well, uh, together with the differences being displayed. Um, and I used the GeomRect specification and, and cohort polar in order to, to make it into a concentric circle. And I think that brings me to the end of uh, today's showcase and uh, some uh, potential extensions that I'm hoping um, are possible from this, uh, from what I've already done, uh, to use either biological or body system ages or both as surrogate endpoints in scenario modeling. And this could be done for uh, analyzing the effect of interventions. One other hope is also is that in uh, cost effectiveness analysis, uh, biological age could be used uh, as long as we have a threshold for unit decrease in biological age because um, the, the biological age, um, as you've seen, uh, is estimated using more, somewhat more objective health outcome measures than current uh, quality of life approaches. And also finally, because uh, multi-state model was used in the uh, risk-based approach of estimating biological age. So this approach can also quite easily be extended in order to estimate the time spent in each health state and also healthy life expectancies using a, uh, an add-on R package called ELECT. And the aspiration as well is that these are ways in which health economic, uh, statistical and epidemiological approaches can all be in integrated. I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you. So thanks very much, May. Hey, that was a lovely presentation. It's great to see something that's maybe a little bit less familiar to us. Um, maybe it stimulates us to think while we're watching the presentation. Also, I thought you struck a really great balance of the content and the R code. I think this is something that a lot of presenters need to think about, about how do they present their work. And I think you did a great job of providing enough of an insight into the code that you um, provided. Um, now, we don't have that much time before the next presentation. I'm keen to, to, to stay on time. I'm